Okay, um, good evening everyone. I think we're going to make a start. Um, welcome to Modern Art Oxford and to tonight's talk. My name's Ben Roberts. I'm the uh, Curator of Education and Public Programmes here at the Gallery. Um, and I would like to introduce this evening's talk, um, which is called uh, What's Important? Art and Politics. Um, it's the first in a series of uh, keynote lectures that we're staging here at Modern Art Oxford as part of our celebrations for our 50th anniversary, uh, which is happening this year, right now. Um, these lectures are intended as a sort of a, a provocation or a statement as much as a question, really, um, uh, as we're looking back at the history of the gallery's program and, uh, and our history, what's been achieved, um, as much as we are uh, looking forward to how museums and art organisations like this one uh, will look in the future and what sort of role they might play um, in tomorrow's society. Um, so what's important in art and politics? Um, what role does art have to play in a political, in a political world um, beyond our votes? Um, what sort of voice do we as artists and curators and intellectuals and professionals, um, what voice do we have to influence political dialogue or effect change um, or even awareness at any level? And what can organisations like Modern Art Oxford or Documenta um, be doing to empower this? And these are sort of just some of the questions which are continuing to frame our thinking about the past and the future, um, thinking about this year's programme. Modern Art Oxford has a proud history of working with artists and curators, engaging with a lot of those sorts of issues, um, and we'll be celebrating that throughout the year with the return of works from our, our past exhibitions by Hans Hacker and Darcy Lang and uh, Kerry James Marshall, to name just a few, um, all of whom will be returning to the gallery as part of the Kaleidoscope uh, programme, which is the, the year-long programme. Um, celebrating um, our anniversary. Um, so to continue this conversation, um, I'm delighted to welcome to the gallery Adam Szymczyk uh, to Modern Art Oxford as tonight's speaker. Adam is a Polish curator, as many of you will know, of some considerable distinction, um, described, um, as I'm sure people keep on saying, um, by the New York Times as a superstar curator. Um, since 2003, he's been the director of the Kunsthalle uh, in Basel. Um, he also co-curated the Fifth Berlin Biennale, in 2008 and is um, currently, as I'm sure you all also know, um, the director of Documenta 14 entitled Learning from Athens, um, uh, which will open in 2017, I think, in both Castle and Athens, so splitting the site. Um, I hope he's going to be able to tell us a little more about some of his plans and why he chose to take that controversial step of staging part of the show in Athens, which is a super politic politicised uh, uh, city at the moment. Um, Adam's going to speak for about 40 minutes or so, maybe or to an hour, um, and then there'll be time for questions. Um, can you please turn off your phones, because we are broadcasting to the world, um, and it will ruin it for posterity if your phone goes off. Um, briefly, I would also like to thank the University of Oxford and Dimitri and uh, Catriona, um, who have been um, instrumental in bringing Adam to Oxford as part of their ongoing conference, which is, has been happening today and is happening tomorrow, um, Cultural Economies and the Contemporary Moment, which is about art, culture and the marketplace. Um, Adam is speaking also at one of the round tables there tomorrow. Um, and that starts at 10.30. Uh, I understand there are still places, so if you would like to um, hear that, then um, head along to the Oxford Martin School um, on the corner of Broad and Cat Street, and you can hear more there and register. Um, so finally, um, I would like to thank you all to, for coming uh, and to um, welcome Adam to Oxford and um, hand over for this evening's talk. Um, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here and to first time in Oxford and to be invited to speak here at Modern Art Oxford. I'd like to thank Paul Hobson for having me here and also to the organizers of the conference, um, Dimitri Papanikolaou and Katrina Kelly. Um, what I'm going to, to present is um, a, a paper which I wrote already uh, well, some time ago, 2013, but I thought maybe it's important not to, uh, to invent the wheel and stick to, to the plan somehow, uh, which is uh, still at the stage of preliminary notes uh, towards a concept of Documenta 14 that is going to take place in, in 2017. So let me begin with some historical um, background or a little panorama of uh, 
of the documenta. And then we'll slowly get to, uh, to the very matter of things. Documenta is an art exhibition which is generally considered to be the single most important recurring event dedicated to contemporary art. It was famously born in Kassel in 1955 out of the sense of cultural urgency felt in post-World War II Germany um, about a decade after the Nazi rule was brought to an end. And it is my belief that this primary sense of urgency behind an experimental exhibition undertaken and understood as a harbinger of change and a means to build both a national and international community with the help of an aesthetic and intellectual experience needs to be restored in the 14th edition of Documenta, which is scheduled to take place in 2017. <coughs> the question of how to best do this is my present concern. But in order to properly get to this question and its possible answers, I must go back a bit to the history that has occurred between 1955 and today, and the various documenta that have taken place in that 60 year period. Between documenta in 1955, the first edition, and documenta two in 1959, the documenta GmbH, the company, was established to secure the perpetuation of the exhibition, which in this way became a cultural institution and has been continuing in the city of Kassel until today. The establishment of this enterprise marked the transition from the original idea of the curator, artist, designer, Arnold Bode, that stood behind the first documenta, which was conceived as a tool for changing the present at that time, to a format that could be repeated and deployed in subsequent iterations the format which at times actively engaged the surrounding political and social context and at times simply stood by as witness to them. The paramount and most interesting part of any approach to documenta consists, in my opinion, in resolving the question of how to fill the vessel it provides with contents that represent a far-sighted response to the current situation in the arts, thus making a significant statement on contemporary culture society and politics, comparable in its impact, hopefully then, to the one that the first documenta had. If the first documenta was created in the wake of an overarching need for the material and social reconstruction of Germany, that requirement paralleled the need to create a common platform of experience and discussion of values for the nation's citizens, and later on internationally as well. And indeed, the contemporary art exhibition provided a plausible forum where such a discussion could take place. While that first documenta, engaging the broken traditions of the avant-garde, was staged among the ruins and flowers, the ruins of Friedericianum and the flowers of the um, huge exhibition of gardening that was taking place in 1955 in Kassel, and which provided a pretext for documenta to be organized. This context allowed it to both look backward to the past and daringly point toward possible futures. The key task undertaken by Arnold Bode, the initiator and the curator of the first and uh, three subsequent editions of documenta, was to ensure that the continuity of development in Western European modern art, interrupted by the wartime years of historical catastrophe, might be reinstated. Led by Arnold Bode and structured according to an interpretative framework drawn by art historian and curator Werner Haftmann, Documenta was bound to the idea of modernist progression in Western European avant-garde painting and sculpture, including its post-war continuations through its second, third, and fourth curatorial iterations. In 1968, Documenta IV was confronted with a critique and social dissent that marked this period. Both the audience and the featured artists called for more participation and for a radical reformulation of the show. In the much debated 1972 edition, curator Harald Seemann embarked on a fully octorial model of curating 
and proposed a 100-day event to replace the somewhat worn formula of his predecessor's 100-day museum. The four editions that followed, with all their particular differences, moved away from the show's ambition to be an all-embracing statement on contemporary art and society. Instead, a more pluralistic, media-specific and artist-centered curatorial vision reigned. Coinciding with the late phase of the Cold War, Documenta in the 1970s and 1980s through the 90s entered the process of becoming a heritage, taking a distance to political realities and coexisting with the general consolidation of the art market around the Western developments that gradually subsumed the great international experiment of minimalism and conceptual art. This curatorial state of things got pointedly challenged by the paradigm shifting Documenta 10, organized by Katrin David in 1997. Her exhibition brought into play new geographies and historical trajectories around the globe, restoring the show's conceptual edge while declaring politics and poetics as an inseparable whole. Documenta 10 was the first to make visible the shift of the world's cultural map after 1989. Without the imaginary enemy, a world economy based on the exploitation of entire nations and peoples, suppressing differences in the stalemate of ideological confrontation between the ill-governed quasi-totalitarian East and the self-righteous democratic West, which is a polar view that in the future would be replaced by the distinction between the West and the South, the West and radical Islam, or the West and anything else depending on, on its need, such a vision had to undergo a radical readjustment. In 2002, Okui and Vezor's Documenta 11 continued this intellectual project, expanding the show's global, global outreach. He brought the discursive critical orientation of Documenta 10 to a logical consequence through the establishment of numerous decentralized platforms in Vienna, New Delhi, and Santa Lucia, Freetown, Lagos, Johannesburg, and Kinshasa, and then in Kassel itself. The last platform was the exhibition. Dedicated to political and cultural subjects such as democracy unrealized, transitional justice, and creolization, these platforms demonstrated that art should not be seen in isolation from the condition of global society, firmly asserted a post-colonial pluralistic view of the world, and accomplished the change of focus from art objects to political and social transformation processes. The cultural expressions articulated in Documenta 11 voiced out this change of focus with unprecedented force, revealing the disastrous effects associated with the quick advance of the global economy and allowing for a more layered picture of the contemporary world to emerge. Including a significant number of non-Western artists and thinkers, Documenta 11 constituted a historical and cultural caesura from which any serious attempt to embrace the present must begin anew. If Documenta 10 and Documenta 11 again positioned the exhibition as a tool of political and social reflection, instead of keeping it limited to an exercise in curatorial excellence and a vehicle for showcasing contemporary art in line with the zeitgeist, the two most recent editions took place among the growing uncertainty caused by the past decade's changes in global economy and dramatic shifts in balance of world power. Furthermore, such geopolitical shifts were paralleled by the increasing diversity of artistic idioms and formats that could not be brought together under one common denominator of a thematic exhibition. In a reflexive turn, inquiring into formative moments of modernity and the legacy of modernism around the globe, Roger Burgels and Ruth Noack's Documenta 12 strive to identify and enliven enlightenment ideas, binding the show with the larger cultural history of Kassel while looking back to lesser known intellectual artistic traditions and investigating the meaning of display concepts applied in Arnold Bode's Documenta in 1955. Caroline Christoph Bakarjiev's Documenta 13 seemed inhibited by similar constraints. The curator performed a detour to the idea of artistic subjectivity and geographic margins, often siding with idiosyncratic narratives and singular artistic attitudes. Documenta 13 exposed the growing difficulty in continuing the revisionist critical ambitions of the exhibition while keeping the stability of its institutional setup and leaving its most basic tenet, the main location limited to Kassel, untouched. 
And this, despite the curator's attempt at establishing symbolic outposts of the show far from Kassel, and most notably in war-torn Kabul. The specific timing and choice of locale were precisely the factors that once allowed Documenta to develop into a now 60-year-old venture. Needless to say, however, the socio-political parameters that made Documenta urgent in 1955 are no longer in play. In 2016, Kassel is geopolitically and culturally a very different place than it was in 1955, when it was located on the frontier of the liberal West and defined as a cultural beacon, shining bright in the night of divided, war-ravaged, reconstruction-minded Europe. Today, it seems, life is elsewhere. To that end, I believe we have again arrived at the point where fundamental questions about place and time need to be asked in order for the exhibition to continue as an efficient measure against the passive cultural mood defined by the expectations of the contemporary audience and art market. Documenta 14 should devise ways to circumvent this spectacular regime. The world's greatest exhibition must again become a critical agency instead of acting as witness, stage, or prey of the spectacle. I believe that for this to happen, Documenta, which has so far been primarily bound to one place and a predictable five-year rhythm, needs to be radically, if temporarily, redefined. In a world undergoing the profound ruptures that have been taking place at increasing speed in this century, Documenta must again seek for its vocation. Documenta 14 should fully embody both its role as a space for reflection on the present and a tool of transformation, which I think it did deliver in diverging contexts and ways in 1955, 1972, 1997, and 2002. I feel it is time, as unclear and unstable as the current state of things may appear, to open the exhibition to the fleeting present, as is reflected in a wide range of cultural practices taking place in locations and contexts of production that do not overlap with the art world as we know it, geographically and economically. In order to activate Documenta as a tool to generate critical investigation, I propose that Documenta 14 should be extended to another city coinciding with a show that will take place in Kassel. While looking at the exhibition's historical development, I came to the conclusion that the position of host that Documenta played towards even the widest variety of guests invited to Kassel, however generous, is not sufficient. The position of host becomes ideologically difficult to maintain if the host never dares to assume the role of guest and leave home. Indeed, Thinking about the future Documenta, I sense that the urgency of its beginnings is not there anymore and needs to be found again. And such a process must be a quest that doesn't presuppose its own result or stick to one direction. The metaphor of the journey that we undertake in order to hold a better understanding of the world and of ourselves offers itself here. Such a trip, once initiated, does not end in its destination. It's not an exploration, but rather a drift a form of willful estrangement that should lead to new realizations for those who undertake it. Therefore, as a programmatic move of the upcoming Documenta 14, I proposed in 2013 that the exhibition in 2017 should take place simultaneously in Athens and Kassel. These two projects realized in different ways while learning from their respective places and from each other will form two pictures that could never be superimposed to form a single image. Nor will the two shows be possible to grasp from a one vantage point. By asking Documenta visitors to take a similar route as its makers, the exhibition would also ask them to take their time, allowing a break in visibility while journeying between the two locations. My hope is that the exhibition will thus become an agent of change and a transformative experience for its audience and participants in both cities. The reasons for Athens itself and not another city are numerous. First, Athens rests in that part of Europe that seems to be a model example of the often extremely violent contradictions, fears and fragile hopes that cannot be dismissed as an internal problem of Greece or any other precarious contemporary democracy. Athens, like larger Greece, is currently struggling with the grave consequences of a deep economic crisis so singular to the geopolitics of today, 
which include the destruction of existing social relations vis-à-vis -vis the rise of right-wing populism amid the unresolved issue of increasing number of refugees. Coming by sea from Syria, the Middle East, Africa and South Asia or crossing the river Evros that separates the country from Turkey and effectively serves as a porous border of what is known as Europe, the migrants find that Greece becomes their final temporary station. And yet, this is not just a Greek problem, but an exemplification of the challenge that the entire European continent is now facing in a far more dramatic way. Moreover, Athens embodies the uncertain future of Western European democracy in a world which is in the process of losing fixed points of reference. Thus, the proverbial Greek crisis makes Athens possibly the most productive location from which to think and learn about the future to come now. Documenta can only visit Athens as a guest with all the limitations and possibilities such status implies. The exhibition can only come into being through on-site research, forging connections, including political ones, and finding local allies willing to engage. The terms of invitation are being negotiated and forms of collaboration still need to be defined in detail. Finally, the exhibition will emerge in a process involving both existing institutions and non-institutional initiatives. On the institutional level, Athens, with its virtual lack of publicly funded contemporary art venues and with most other cultural institutions underfunded or on the verge of collapse, while being home to many art producers who work in spite of the everyday hardship, could be a place where Documenta might play an important role, helping to rebuild a sense of confidence and community instigated by contemporary art. Um, having worked on the project two years, uh, I must say it is not certain to me um, at this point what form the exhibition or the projects that will constitute it should assume nor it is evident which scale they should require. Nevertheless, we envisage a need for creation of a debate, public conversations that will begin this month with participation of several artists who have been already invited to take part in Documenta. This should turn the upcoming Documenta into an exercise in institution building that uses existing public venues, not necessarily dedicated to contemporary art or creates a new one or new venues, instead of simply sheltering under the sign of the temporary use of abandoned locations, which usually simply boosts their prospective value as real estate for speculation. As far as the question of the role of Documenta 14 in Athens is concerned, from the many conversations I've had over the last four years with colleagues in Athens, artists and curators and others working outside the visual arts field, I can sense not only frustration and feelings of helplessness caused by the petrified structures of cultural bureaucracy that are in place in Greece, but also the expectation for actual substantive change. The process of defining the terms and scope of Documenta 14 in Athens already constitutes a part of the preparations for the next iteration of the exhibition and could be reflected in the showing castle as a whole. The structure of the castle exhibition could be informed by the notion of the copy, considered as a reflection and an imitation, image and counter image. This notion would not be placed in the thematic scope of the exhibition. In other words, Documenta 14 would not be about the copy per se, but could serve as a generative and transformative grammar of the show with the original site of Documenta relocated to Athens and the reflection echo, image, or lesson of Documenta projected back as an exhibition to Castle. My use of these terms should, should be understood as against the normative order they usually imply, whereupon the authentic, genuine, and original is always judged superior to any poor copy or cheap imitation. Here, between Athens and Castle, the political and socio-economic implications of this hierarchical order should be called into question. The presence and transfer of copies has been historically crucial for the self-perpetuation of the still persistent Europocentric cultural model that has always presupposed the superiority of the classical ideal in which Athens has long played its role as one of the central symbolic references. This was most explicitly addressed in the naming of Atheneum, a journal published by August Wilhelm and Karl Friedrich Wilhelm Schlegel between 1798 and 1800 which laid out the program of the German Romantic movement. 
In 2012, the classic reference was invoked in the new official slogan of the Greek Ministry for Touristic Development, Greece, all-time classic. The classic and timeless clearly continue to be the country's main selling points vis-a-vis -vis the Western European tourists. At the same time, both terms help to establish a re reassuring distance to what they silently render as incidental and ephemeral, most certainly barbarian and dangerous. <coughs> But the notion of the copy, historically related to neoclassicism as a costume of representation and self-assertion for the ruling classes, is even more pertinent today. Currently, the copy gains a different meaning in relation to contemporary image production in both the cultural and commercial sectors and within the clashing politics of copying and copyright protection in the global capitalist economy, of which the luxury industry is the most visible media-driven part. I think it is worthwhile to address the tension between the exclusivity inherent to the idea of the timeless classic and the inclusive, pervasive character of a poor copy through the concept of the double exhibition. Though the working title of my proposal, Documenta 14, Learning from Athens, is not meant to be the definitive title of the exhibition, I believe it gives a good impression of this intended twofold structure and the reciprocity it would involve. I'd like to underline the fact that this proposal for Documenta 14 should not be mistaken as an attempt for an, at an export of a revolution, which Documenta certainly is not being a strong institution in Germany that renews itself in five-year cycles, nor it is intended as a colonial conquest of yet unknown territory, bringing a top-down dynamic into a conflicted and precarious local situation. But the fear of making mistakes would make a poor excuse for the lack of actual involvement. Instead, I suggest that Documenta 14 might become a fully embodied lesson in breaching the normative, economic, political, and geographic divisions and attempting a shared experience mediated by culture and more specifically, the contemporary art exhibition. In this proposal, Athens stands metonymically for that rest of the world that has not shared the experience of Documenta in a proper sense due to lacking privileges inherent to the position of the host. So it is not just about Athens and Kassel or Greece and Germany. I imagine Documenta 14 as a manifestation in the form of two autonomous, almost simultaneous and related exhibitions in Kassel and in Athens of the dissolution of barriers separating those who lack the simplest means from those who are usually all too willing to give them lessons but seldom a hand. In this case, Documenta 14 might be an exhibition conceived as a living document of the process of the formation of communality and the awareness of contemporary cultural production's role in this process. For most Greeks today, Germany and, and Councillor Angela Merkel symbolically represent the feared external economic pressure on Greek citizens who in the decades preceding the current crisis have been drained out of the resourcefulness by international capital, um, culminating in the US real estate crisis in 2008 which triggered the crisis in Greece, the weakest link in the EU economy. Um, by the selfishness of the Greek political class, by an overgrown state administration, and by conservative attitudes reinforced by the lack of strong secular tradition at home. Against this state of things and seeking inspiration in the formative period of the 19th century modern Greek democracy, which inspired international emancipatory movements and saw European art institutions staging exhibitions to benefit the Greek insurgency, Documenta 14 in Kassel and Athens will be essentially about giving, about solidarity and about trust, and thus about putting lessons of past Documenta into practice. While Athens is a physical and political location, it is also a screen for many cultural projections including ones that risk becoming Orientalist fantasies. Historically, the exhibition in Athens would look back to the genealogy of democracy, its institutions and, def and deficiencies and potentialities. Regarded now as a holiday stopover city, Athens deserves to be visited and contemplated a bit longer than just to look at its ancient monuments on the way to the famous white and blue Greek islands. Like many cities cited on loaded history and contemporary rapture, Athens holds multitudes. It is a multinational metropolis that struggles to be habitable. At present, it might be perceived as the, as the most anti-classic city in Europe, 
contrary to the appearance introduced through its 19th century forced neoclassical remaking by German architects in service of the Bavarian Prince Otto, who was the King of Greece between 1832 and 1862. Athens is also the city that in 1933 welcomed a group of the leading architects of the Fourth Siam Congress. While journeying from Marseille on ocean liner SS Patris II, the Congress laid out new principles of urbanism that were subsequently published in Le Corbusier's Athens Charter in 1943, as well as inspired Joseph Louis Sert's 1942 book, Can Our Cities Survive? An ABC of Urban Problems, Their Analysis, Their Solutions, based on the proposals formulated by the CM. The latter provided an argument for the post-war remaking of European cities in the modernist spirit, as opposed to nostalgic historicism and reconstruction, a debate that gained much currency in Kassel in 1955. And yet, contrary, contrary to the Siam participants' quintessentially rational visions formalized as two papers of preparatory observations and provisional resolutions while their vessel was crossing the sea, Athens today is a sprawling, chaotic, hyper-intense harbor city of the Mediterranean with collapsing public infrastructure and coping with endemic social problems. From today's vantage point, one can say that the modernization was a short-lived attempt in Greece so far. As a principle, the show in Castle will involve the same artists who would make work in Athens. Thus, each artist would present his or her work in both locations, with the works being different or occasionally the same, responding to one or the two contexts. This structure of gaps, disconcerting repetitions and dislocations would lend the entire exhibition something of a pendulum character, elaborating the impossibility of being in two places at the same time. The structure would embrace discontinuity rather than appear as a bridge in the form of projects that complete each other between the two locations or end up as two isolated sequences of displays addressing the specifics of each of the two sites separately. <coughs> it is important that each of the two exhibitions create a completely different experience for the visitor with occasional shortcuts, flashbacks, allusions, and déjà vu effects occurring between the two sites. Coinciding with Documenta 14, I imagine parallel pro projects, public meetings, and events set up by a variety of actors and taking place in different public venues in Kassel and Athens, forming a loose meshwork as a shadow of Documenta 14 and allowing the articulation of various voices as another aspect of the exhibition. Altogether, the exhibition should demonstrate an agility in addressing the real needs of the moment in real time as a sort of responsive program that learns from events and takes feedback into the process instead of sticking to one predetermined scenario during the years of its making. In my opinion, as a curator, this agility is precisely what makes a great exhibition different from the pitch of a film script that has to tell the story according to the rules of the industry in order to be accepted by the producers. If the exhibition could be considered as a genre, or perhaps even as a genre of genres, more than merely as a format, medium, or a structure that needs to be filled with content, then it needs time to grow and become something in its own right. To that end, my proposal aims to modify the received formula, the dispositive of documenta. Such change will certainly engage everyone involved in the fullest sense, from politicians to organizers, artists, and all other creative participants in a long and complex trajectory of actions. As a curator, I understand my task primarily as that of enabling, social agent, uh, enabling agent for social relations that emerge through the making and the concurrent discussion of art and the making is always making it public. The operating principle in the making of Documenta 14 will be that of absorbing and responding to a variety of urgencies on both the political and the aesthetic level, with the aim to make the exhibition both contain and show some of its own history, much like a diary of a voyage that only begins at the point of arrival. In this, one might look at the difference between the in vitro and in vivo experiment, the former reaches a result that can be glimpsed already in the means adopted at the outset, while the latter constantly modifies its means to the facts encountered on the way. The Documenta 14 should not create an autonomous reality as a utopian island of meta-discourse, 
but bring hope and discursive tools for understanding the reality around us. This makes it a form of realism, I suppose, in which art is understood as a cognitive extension of our existen existence and not as an epic narration. In the context of Documenta 14, one of the aspects of the contemporary situation that I would like to explore in more detail is the shift to immaterial labor and knowledge-based economy in the developed world and the moving of material production to developing countries with the resulting geopolitical, economic, and cultural divide. At the same time, suspicious of the inev inevitability of any prescribed order of global development equaling the reproduction of sameness, Documenta 14 should testify to the proliferation of new forms of communication, including social networks, whether mobility or liquidity, which enable new types of work to emerge and be mediated, bypassing political oppression and overcoming economic limitation of place. Against this background, the function of artistic production has to be thought about in new ways and from new positions, allowing one to see from outside the structures of an art world that is always self-adjusting to subsume new forms and distribution channels that artists themselves devise. These issues so far seem to have been largely out of curatorial agendas as they run counter to the accepted ways of understanding art and its mediation that we have been long accustomed to. History is what transforms documents into monuments, Michel Foucault once noted. And another quote, clearly the monument refers not only to a work of architecture, but also to the collective action. The architect Lina Bobardi later succinctly rejoined. I borrow both lines thinking that might be useful for this proposal for Documenta 14. And accordingly, I believe that this sense of collective action tackling the common task can be given a new life within the framework created by an exhibition such as Documenta. My proposal is not the result of a wish for the full octorial authority of the curator, which is an unsupportable position today. Instead, I wish to articulate a need to bring together many individuals and entities into a process that affects substantial change and brings about a sustainable result, both for the visitors of the exhibition and for those participating in its making, affecting also their life after Documenta. By proposing a decisive shift that will consist in the creation of the two resonating exhibitions in the two cities of Documenta 14, Athens and Kassel, I would like to return to the original role of Documenta as a document testifying to time and place and one that cannot be replaced by the monument to its own heritage. Thank you very much. I would be very happy to take questions. where you present yourself as being somebody who does not have any colonial ambitions in that situation. And there's quite another how you might be interpreted in a particular political and extremely volatile situation such as there is in Athens. Have you found working on the ground is actually different from what you planned in advance? Or is it sort of much as you predicted? I think it's... I, I didn't make any two specific predictions, I think. Right. So whatever happens, I, I just, I take it, you know. I, I cannot say that I expected that we're gonna be only welcome with open arms or that we're gonna be totally rejected. So we are somewhere uh, in between. And of course, um, uh, you know, my declaration of, uh, of the lack of ambition to colonize is a preemptive statement, but at the same time, that's, you know, what I think. I mean, I'm sorry for this. But um, as I said, one could eventually decide not to do Documenta in Athens and then keep doing it in Kassel. Would it help the situation in Athens? I doubt. Uh, do we want to, to change everything in Athens? I doubt. You know, we, we, have, we are working in limited field. I mean, we are working with, um, with artifices. We are not working on reality. I mean, it's a fiction that this gap can be ever fully crossed. And I think the discussion earlier on today, which dealt with representations or images of the crisis is showing very clearly that there is this need or like a kind of moral urge to 
uh, step over a border that you know, divides the reality of refugees from the reality of photographers, but this can never be crossed. It is crossed within an artifact, perhaps. So I think it's artifact that has to be judged. You know, and um, we are working on, on an exhibition of a kind, which includes a long period of preparations and several manifestations of the exhibition on the way to the exhibition. So we, we begin end of this month with a kind of semi-public venue um, created together with the Athens School of Fine Arts. So we're going to um, work with students uh, of the academy and um, we're going to bring artists into dialogue with students uh, fairly early. So this is one of the means uh, to counter this expectation that Documenta should produce some sort of coherent list of artists at a certain point and publish it. So we want these artists to be to a degree that they can part of the life of the city in the process. And then the work itself would be a materialization of uh, their experience. Partly, only partly because I don't believe that this project is about some kind of genius lotsi of one place or the other. I would strongly rely on the uh, ideas that that I know that had been developed in the practice of those artists who are going to be part of the exhibition. I'm more interested in kind of deploying these practices in this context rather than just learning from the context by you know, making few observations and then transforming it into kind of picture or portrait of the situation. Um, yes, if this... Yes. Right, well, okay. uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, following on up on this, I, I was stricken and I really enjoyed your references to lesson education. So it brings, I mean, an obvious question for me to ask is so how would you define the ethical imperative, the category of ethics? And, and if you see there to be an ethical imperative in sort of what the project or document is about. And, 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 and a question sort of slightly related on the geopolitical aspect that was wondering about this category of the global south and how important this category or this concept if you were, is in the, develop, in the course of development. Mm -hmm. Well, we understood from the very beginning that it, it is not simply learning from Athens that you cannot, in a way you say it, but you cannot just say that you're learning from Athens. So then this line from, from Gayatri Spiva came in hand, which was something about learning to learn from below, which is basically trying to project yourself in the position of the other and from that position try to understand something perhaps. But I don't think, I mean, there, there have been many questions so far to ask, what, what have you learned in the last year and a half? I, I really cannot answer this question and this is not defensive. We are in the process of learning, but this process is not going to be you know, complete and then produce the exhibition. You know. Of course, we're going to be judged um, for this exhibition and the artists are going to be judged for, for the works in this exhibition. But I don't see the exhibition as a kind of uh, culmination and answer to this question that the working title of the show is posing. Because as I said, it's a working title and maybe it will remain a working title. So it's, it's, it's not meant to be to the it's not meant to be the title that kind of formulates this kind of imperative um, once and for good. It may change, but we don't know yet into what. We're testing some ideas. There's new phrases coming in. So, um, And the position, uh, I mean, ethically, for me it was very difficult to formulate a concept that would make sense in Kassel. And I realized that I was struggling with this idea for quite a long time, like how to do something that is in a way relevant or that responds to so many urgencies, like thinking out of castle. And then I try to, to relocate, like mentally, to, to change the place. And then it became kind of more understandable suddenly, I think. So instinctively, I, un I understand uh, the situation in Athens uh, better perhaps than in many places in, in the Western Europe.
Yes, it's a, it's a very good question. I mean, um, as you may know, the Comenta is, has the core funding from the German state, basically, which is the Federal Cultural Foundation and the city of Kassel in the state of Hessen. So this is the core funding, but it seems that this funding is not uh, sufficient or it doesn't really include you know, the, the money for, for production, so to say, in, in, of artworks or situations or, or whatever. So, um, so far we haven't been um, too active, let's say, in reaching towards um, the types of um, corporate sponsorship that I guess you had in mind. Uh, on the other hand, it is inevitable at certain point in order to realize certain projects that re require rather colossal funds to either drop them all together or to go for this kind of funding. So it's a it's an unresolved issue. I think I think politically I'm not trapped in um, in this funding issue because I don't represent the Documenta Enterprise. I stand for the project of Documenta 14 and I'm trying to make a distinction between the two things. Maybe in order to put a question mark on the very establishment of Documenta itself as an enterprise or as a structure and that's why I believe I decided to uh, try move it to Athens because this seemed to be the least likely place to go uh, with this exhibition in Europe politically. It was at the point when, uh, let's say, the, that proverbial Greek crisis was, um, was kind of isolated and, and contained within, uh, within, within Greece. And what I'm trying to do is to, to open it up, uh, to, to say that through Greece we can see um, many other things happening elsewhere and not necessarily in the countries of, of the European or global south. So it's a, it's a place from which to see things differently, I guess. And whether this is realized with some corporate and some state support, that we will see. I mean, at the moment, um, as I said, the basic uh, and quite substantial funding is given, but uh, already the idea of moving the project to Athens uh, is a little bit of a, uh, how to say, um, it, it is not the most obvious idea in terms of this uh, core funding, you know, how you use it, for instance. So. Thank you very much for your speech. Um, to, it's, uh, to continue from the previous question, but also um, push it to another direction, I was, uh, when first you made the announcement that uh, Documenta 2017 will be in both Castle and Athens, I realized that especially in Greek media, the idea of um, a national, or at least nationally framed institution uh, comes to Greece was something that many people picked up. And then also there was a kind of a sense of national pride in Greek media and all that. So the nation, has played a role, at least in the Greek coverage I've seen, and I don't know mm. how much it has played a role in German coverage. Um, <coughs> the first part of my question is this, how, what was the reaction, say, in Germany and in Greece when you made the mm. announcement? The second part is how much the nation plays a role in what you do in a Documenta 2017. It seems that you are speaking to an international uh, audience Yes, yet both Greece as a nation came in in your um, presentation just now and well, documented. Well, well, yeah, what I referred to um, in, in, in the presentation was a formation of a certain idea of, of Greece in the 19th century, which is a enormous and well, in the meantime, well analyzed concept through the terms of archaeology, for instance, and the role the archaeology played in. in in the formation of the concept of national identity in Greece. This has been recently quite uh, exhaustively demonstrated. And uh, also at the same time, the kind of uh, 
formation of the idea of Greece in the German Romanticism, so from, from the other end, slightly preceding. And, and this, this is all, uh, let's say, uh, overlapping with a period of, uh, in which the idea of nations, the very idea of nation states after the French Revolution is uh, somehow brought into something that then produces this, this nation states. And uh, I don't think that this has much of relevance as anything else than the object of, of critique today. So this kind of identities are, I mean, what exactly is your question? What, what I think about the nation or? How much, uh, yeah, are you going against it in terms of, um, you know, it seems, it seems that you want to undermine this idea of national, um, strict national identity. Yes, maybe complicated. Maybe complicate it a bit, you know, by fir first of all bringing the kind of state institution of Germany into Greece where the only state institutions of Germany or Western Europe at large operating in Greece are the financial institutions. So here we have a different kind of institution that comes with a similar um, reputation perhaps, but uh, just by the fact that it's first read as something that is from, from that category, you know. So uh, I think we have to... Um, to prove it through our actions in Athens that it's a little different uh, deal, let's say, that, that we are offering, or rather that there is no deal. Uh, you know. No, it's not, it's not another set of exhibitions, it's one exhibition. It's just in two, two places. So, it's, it's a mystery. <laughs> like, it's, at least it's not three places, it'll be even, you know. But it's not Instagram that happens. It's not Castle plus Instagram. It's another geographic location. I, I don't know how Instagram wor works, really. Um, I, I think, um, like, you're asking question to a kind of documenta marketing person. I, w I could come up with, with, a, with an answer, but myself, I didn't think how, how to, you know, I, I thought, how, you know, I thought more about how to keep both parts of the ex exhibition alive and strong in different ways. That, that's what I was thinking. I was not thinking about, you know, one being at the cost of the other. The first reaction in Castle was, are ah, they are stealing documenta from us, right? The, uh, the first reaction in Athens, they are bringing documenta to us. I'm neither bringing nor stealing. I'm performing a certain rhetoric uh, operation, which is very much in, in, the, in, the, in the kind of parole and how people speak about it. And I'm very interested in the variety of responses and how situation reconfigures itself in both places around this concept that is very difficult to grasp because it involves a duality and we are somehow conditioned to think in terms of like, you know, one place, one time, one action. So this is trying to, to loosen it up um, a bit. And also, I don't, I don't know, I mean, of course it's for art lovers, uh, it's complicated to travel from one biennial to the other and 
with an art fair in between here and there, but like I'm, I'm not too um, concerned about it. I mean, we are you know, tr trying to work on it. We just uh, announced proudly that we're going to have a direct connection from a tiny airport in Kassel to a huge airport in Athens. It's, I think, first international flight operating um, from Kassel Airport. Um, we'll see. Um, it, it is interesting to ask this question about like how people manage time in relation to art or events that require their presence, for instance. I think presence is very important, and then you have to take a decision, you know, because you can be present in two places at the same time. So obviously you're going to miss something, but this is very important to, to come to terms with this loss, I think. Because in a way it puts you in a position where you have to, to make a choice. You have to, in a way, configure or curate a part of exhibition uh, yourself. You, you are not being led from event A to event B. Um, in some kind of schedule that is manageable. So this idea of m manageability is not of so much interest here. Rather, the questioning of the possibility of managing everything is at stake, perhaps. So things should be rather happening than happening according to a kind of prescribed scenario. It's an oscillation between the points that interests us. Maybe we, um, last document I was visited by something like 900,000 people from um, many different countries around the globe. And they all had to get to Kassel somehow. 
I don't think anyone, you know, asked like a strong question about the kind of ecological cost of this. So I don't think that by offering a more uh, distributed um, model of an exhibition in which actually we are thinking about addressing the exhibition in Athens uh, in the first place to people in Athens. It's a very big city. Apparently a blockbuster exhibition in our category, contemporary art culture, is uh, the one that uh, attracts something like 50,000 people. So. I don't know how many people are going to come to Athens, especially to see Documenta, hopefully many, but, but I think <coughs> it is not creating this like one destination to which you know, the art world and the surroundings have to flock. Um, rather working on the idea of choice and asking a question, um, like kind of, uh, yeah, Asking the visitors to the exhibition to, to also first answer a basic question. You know, which part of the show I want to see? Do I want to see like two parts? Can I afford seeing two parts and so forth? I mean, I mean it's not totally inclusive, of course. It never is. And uh, I think it will be uh, pretty... Uh, inclusive for the people in Greece, for sure. Um, I don't think that that many uh, Greeks went to see Documenta in Kassel. So, yeah, these are some of the concerns, but... Yeah, it would be great to um, reduce art flies, um, as Gustav Metzger once famously proposed, but it remains a proposal. And it's, it's not a cynical statement, it's just a statement of a matter of, of, uh, of fact. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I don't know if I can say that I expect, but I would like uh, the kind of lasting memory of the experience to stay, but not only with the visitors, but also with, with the uh, participants in the process in many ways, not only artists, but many other people with whom we've been talking now for months, if not, not years, about Documenta and about different projects, about different venues about politics, about the city and so forth. And this definitely brings a kind of discussion in, in the city of Athens that I think is, of course, taking place in, uh, in many ways, but uh, this is a powerful amplifier for, for this kind of debates. And these debates will soon become public too, so they become more um, yeah, publicly heard, which doesn't mean that we're counting on press response, or like media response primarily, but um, slowly this discussion will affect more people. Then quite concretely, we are very much hoping that um, we could enable some um, institutions in Athens from very small ones to, to, to really large ones to to keep going, um, because sometimes it feels like they're gonna be closing down anytime soon, and that will be very sad, I think, in this city, like it will be in any other city, but we're talking Athens, and this is the city in crisis in, in Europe. I don't know any other, actually, like this. So, um, yeah, I think, and then there are like little practical things, but uh, this is too ridiculous to talk about. But there are like small things that we can maybe uh, change or leave behind. You know, we're not gonna like build, uh, you know, something huge and then leave it as empty. 
or we're not gonna ruin anything. So we're gonna try to improve things a little bit and get people involved and let them uh, participate while helping to make this exhibition happen in, in Athens. I, I think in, in some way it has similarities to to how the uh, documenta in 1955 was organized in Kassel. It was not with like huge ambition, but it was with an idea of like uh, the current situation is not um, supportable and we have to do something to, to change it. Uh, of course, one can also say that this uh, from the start falls into some kind of logic uh, that is a larger frame of Marshall Plan and it was all planned by the Bundesrepublik <laughs> government with American money and CIA was probably already watching and one document later the abstract expressionism appeared big time and th the rest of the story we all know. Mm. But I don't know, I could not, res you know, I'm not ecological enough to say the documenta is not needed and it should never happen because it would have been better if there was no documenta but just the gardening exhibition <laughs> organized by, by the German state in 1955. So, yeah. Yes? Have you thought about the idea, and this is probably the lightweight notion, of bringing together the Greeks and the Germans, and the secretary of the Greeks regards the Germans as their nemesis, and the other way around, perhaps, of having Mr. Varoufakis to introduce the execution in Castle, <laughs> and Mr. Soy to introduce the one in Africa. <laughs> wait, wait. I've got some more ideas. And take the opportunity at the same time to take Mr. Soibo to Lesbos, Heos, and Fox. Thereby, by so doing, you save more money for the Germans in Germany going to Castle because there are German tourists in Fox, a tremendous number of them, so they can see the exhibition in Alcos, in Fox, in Fox, Heos, and Lesbos, and then take them to Athens. And courtesy of the Greek Minister of Culture, they can have a free ticket to visit the Acropolis Museum, the Acropolis and the exhibition in Athens. Uh, yeah, that would be more or less the, the kind of cultural circuit uh, that would uh, summarize the current situation, I think. But I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see uh, that this is the logic that we must follow. H however, yeah, I mean, I, 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 was, I was toying with the idea of uh, very important politician opening the exhibition in Athens. Uh, I don't know which one though. Um, and I, I don't know whom I should ask to open the exhibition in Kassel. Um, I guess uh, for me the, the, the ac actually existing politicians are a little bit like out of this equation. They already uh, express their opinions. These opinions vary. For instance, Mr. Varoufakis, whom I never met personally, sort of dismissed the show with, you know, a, a small job during one of his, you know, conferences following his demise on the political scene uh, in, in Greece. Mr. Steinmeier, on the contrary, expressed his joy. Uh, um, he said something about, you know, Documenta building a cu cultural bridge between the two countries, um, which I thought was maybe worth extending into something like generally a bridge, not only the cultural bridge, but one should think about this idea of bridging in a larger sense than just like bridging it on the back of documenta. So yeah, there are different possible uses of documenta in this situation. They're all very interesting. And uh, we're gonna be not only one caught in, in these ideological traps, but I guess we're gonna somehow uh, find a way not to be trapped for too long in one trap. So we're gonna just fall from one to the other. Yes, please. That I don't know, honestly. 
Honestly, I don't know what it might be. I mean, maybe I, I should know what it might be like, but I, I, I don't know what it, it will be. Uh, so if I say that uh, for me art is more like a kind of c cognitive extension or, or some way of uh, approaching uh, reality or what we can agree that reality around us is, um, I, I think realism, which is not understood as representation, for instance, in this case, not representation of misery, not representation of suffering or, of, you know, the kind of um, graphic representation of what, you know, how crisis manifests itself through images, um, but more like ways of understanding of, of the reasons. And I think the artists who are going to be invited in this exhibition are, I see them primarily as thinkers through forms. So I very much hope that the forms that are going to be generated and the words that are going to be written by these people are going to help many people to maybe ask questions in a different way and not uh, just follow everything like we all do through the media, through, you know, through different kinds of media, of course, you, you, you can choose, but, but there is this paralyzing feeling of uh, impossibility or helplessness vis-a-vis -vis the events of uh, in the world today that I think we are probably all um, sharing and I think that um, an exhibition, the exhibition like this might be in a way a kind of empowering tool because it, it offers a possibility through an artwork to approach the situation around us in a different way and that, that's why we need artists I think um, rather than uh, only rely on, on politicians, for instance, or specialists in other fields. And I'm not talking about the idea of, of a kind of autonomy of art. It's, it's, it's not just things to be contemplated, but I think that via art we engage with reality in a much more profound way than we do da uh, daily or in our everyday lives. So if art makes sense, it makes sense for that. Yes, please. Are you talking to involve Syrian slash artists slash refugees um, to make a statement that Athens is now a new home? Probably Castle. Yeah. I mean, if you visit our website, uh, we have been publishing for already several weeks, uh, actually, since uh, more or less around the attacks in Paris. We started a collaboration with a um, Syrian collective of filmmakers called Abu Nadara. And they are operating in Syria and they are anonymous and they have a spokesperson who is operating outside of Syria. So basically every Friday evening we are um, putting on our website one film made uh, in sort of almost like real time, most likely. I mean, there's no other information provided than the title of the film. There's no names of the makers and so forth. So occasionally there is a title. So this is like one, one way of dealing with um, the question of how to, to represent the crisis, in, the, in this case, the war. And Abu Nadara say that their main objective in creating these films is to kind of retain the right to image that they see as one of the fundamental human rights. They think it should be inscribed in constitutions. And they think that the images are mercilessly and in a, in a very humiliating way uh, for the Syrian people of all kinds manipulated through the media or not really manipulated because it's not about simple manipulation that, that is the cropping of the picture, but it's just about, for instance, the graphic depiction of violence on certain subjects while refraining from equally graphic depiction of violence on certain other subjects. So these films are made against this mentality and we are putting them on our website. I think this is, uh, in this particular case, what we can do at the moment and then we will try to, to work with, uh, with, this, with this collective also in the exhibition. And I, I think, I mean, I could give more examples, uh, maybe not specifically of addressing the issue of Syrian refugees, but there will be many ways in the exhibition of 
addressing this and other issues that we are concerned uh, with at the moment and that affect us. Uh, maybe f uh, for the first time since quite long we are affected by the issues and not only um, uh, watching. So. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to see Dr. Mantes, even more so than I was before. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for coming and 